feels like the only thing I can handle per day in terms of growth is just the gym and then after that um, nothing else nothing else goes to plan nothing else is which is scheduled is executed e.g. library learning learning languages reading even playing video games the only thing I have been doing after coming back from the gym is uh, watching YouTube and watching movies uh, and a little bit of research here and there about said movie or about said YouTube video uh, so last night uh, I had a nap oddly uh, after my IF uh, eating period so I ate a lot, a lot <laughs> half a grapefruit half a cantaloupe melon was it cantaloupe? No. half a half a grapefruit half a honeydew melon <laughs> banana and an apple that was a lot and I also ate the uh, chicken thighs combo and also the tuna surprised yeah <laughs> so that was a lot <laughs> um, in terms of getting stuff done I've just not been executing this week at all don't know whether it's because I'm scared or because I'm genuinely tired from the gym or a combination of the both but that's what has happened so this is me documenting that I haven't even made any YouTube videos um, such as you know the ideas that I had in South Korea because of the wind waking up in the morning it does feel as cold as South Korea but I know South Korea is colder just that there's no wind um, we are February 2nd now it's amazing to think that January's just come and gone in the new year of 2018 it's amazing just come and gone today we are doing back and biceps I wouldn't say like least favorite most favorite day but going all the way back this is the one day that I do remember after uh, LeBron got his first championship I remember staying up watching it going straight to the gym and then going straight to work and then obviously suffering from lack of sleep but um, that, that, that day I remember vividly because I remember talking to my work colleague about how you know LeBron said that he's got no cares in the world he can't really worry because he's the MVP and he's got a championship you know uh, that day was amazing to finally see someone who's been striving to achieve something and remember this guy lost twice in the finals before he reached his goal so that must have sucked ass yeah and you know present day he'll always be below 500 no matter what so I mean his legend quote unquote will always be tarnished by that but I think in years to come it won't be uh, stories about one person dominating. It will be team stories, and there won't be dynasties. I mean, the past three sh three years it has been the same finals, but I think Celtics have a chance this year, as well as Houston, uh, San Antonio, and no. But you know, playoffs are playoffs. Yeah, you you don't know what's going to happen. Even if you get to that Uno Mas game, uh, 
the other team could come back. You know, I mean, even the Warriors blew a three-one lead in the finals two years ago. So, you never can tell with sports. That's what makes it so beautiful. Yeah. Uh, all right, going back to my rhetoric uh, about would you employ someone even though they had all the skills in the world? and were really good at doing what they were doing except as an employee you couldn't offer them work this is the business point this is the business perspective of the industry it's, it's not the employee's fault employer, sorry excuse me that's it. as an employer would you employ someone that even though they have all the skills in the world they can do everything really well but you don't have any work to give them as an employer no right because you don't have any work to give them so why are you employing them to well, keep them on your book for safekeeping just in case someone in the other company snaps, snaps them up no it doesn't make sense so you're not employed by that company and then other companies follow suit and then realize you know there's no work for this person so there's no point in employing and then the virus goes on and on <coughs> it's not the employer's fault it's until the work gets taken over by robots or work becomes so new that they have to take a risk they have to just be faithful that this person on paper, even though he's got no experience, he fits the bill, he's an untested talent, and they just have a feeling, a gut feeling, they have to go with their gut that they are good for the job, that they are capable. Now that happened a lot more in the 80s and 90s with untested directors with untested scripts so on and so forth and then a thought came to me had Mifune accepted the role way back in 1977 maybe we would have seen a lot more copycat uh, movies with other leading uh, not leading but other supporting I guess Asian stars that would have been the key point so that, that that's an alternative timeline that I think needs to be uh, assessed the possibilities of wow that could have happened and that could have stopped the, all of what's going on right now it is kind of ridiculous to 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 to, to, to say that I think we're approaching 50 years now that the industry still hasn't changed and, and as KL said she has never played a non-Chinese role in any of her casting in any of her characters it's just ridiculous right I mean, come on man Not, it's not right, you know. Gotta, gotta think about the future. Gotta think about the people involved, you know. So, it, it, rather than just rant on and on about it, this is one of the motivating factors for me to start writing. For me to just insert an Asian char character or characters into the script because the world needs it <coughs> we've got 2.1 billion people in China right and you're telling me that not one of them can be an Asian actor are you are you serious 
in terms of pure numbers that's that's just ridiculous 2.1 billion people <sighs> oh, uh, uh, anyway <sighs> um, video is kind of long now so I'm gonna hold my thoughts and use those thoughts during the training session so I'll say peace out peace out